exciting episode of Automate with Dave and today we are going to see how we can integrate Microsoft Teams with UiPath using the MS Teams activity. So this activity that today we are going to talk about is the Microsoft Teams activity that is again um, like uh, which is uh, available in the uh, UiPath uh, marketplace. Another thing about this is like this activity uses Microsoft Teams Graph API. So it will use Microsoft Graph API. Microsoft Graph API is being used for automating a number of applications which are uh, which are like with the Microsoft such as Microsoft SharePoint, Microsoft Outlook, again the Microsoft 360, like 365 applications. So there are a number of use cases and also Microsoft Teams is one of them that we are going to see. So today uh, when we are going to see about this use case, there will be free like a few of the prerequisites that we first need to you know, adhere to in order for having this automation to take place. The first thing is that under your Microsoft Team client, you must have one of the Microsoft Team. So I have three teams as of now, that is AWD Hub, AWD Technologies and so on. Also I have like within a team, you also need to have one of the channel. So I have two channels currently under my AWD Technologies, one is a general channel and one is automate with their use cases. So our objective is to send a message in this specific channel which is automate with their use cases. So how we will do it? Let's see. So the very first thing that you need to do is first you need to go to your Microsoft Azure portal. So to go to Microsoft Azure portal, you can simply type a portal.azure.com and it will redirect you to this particular screen. So here what you can do is uh, you can just go to your Azure Active Directory. So here in my portal menu, I will be clicking on this. So once I click on this, the first thing you need to do is you need to click on the app registrations. You first need to create an app here. So as of now, I don't have any app. So I'll be clicking on new registration. Here I have to name my app something. So let me name it as UiPath Unattended. And here I have to also give a account type. So I can either use accounts in this organizational directory only, which is a single tenant. Now this is used for specifically attended uh, kind of an automation. The reason being is like when you use this kind of an account type uh, and you when you uh, select the authorization type to be an interactive token, what happens is like there will be a pop up whenever your automation will take place. Now this kind of a pop-up will redirect you to provide your credentials in order to log in into Microsoft Teams. So now this kind, like till you have uh, given your password and your username, and uh, till then that particular uh, flow would be stopped, paused for that moment. So this is the kind of an attended kind of a use case where you can uh, deploy something like this. For today in this use case, we are going to see an unattended kind of a um, deployment. Now again for an unattended kind of a deployment there are two things that we can use. One is an integrated Windows uh, like a Windows integrated authentication. Another is like a basic username and password specific authentication. So we are going to see the username and password specific authentication. So to uh, use that specific part we are going to use this third option that is any account be it a personal account or be it an account in any of the organizational directory also with a multi-tenancy will be able to access this application. Okay, so I will be using this third option and I'll be clicking on register. So once I click on register, you can see it is uh, creating the UiPath unattended application. So my application is being created. Now once it has been created, I will go to this uh, specific part called as authentication. In this authentication menu, there is a allow public client flows. So you need to enable this in order to make your application public. So I will click on yes. And once I click on yes, I will be just saving this. So once I click on the save button, the update happened successfully. Now the next thing is I have to now give some API permissions for this application. So like I told you, it uses Microsoft Graph. So we will be giving some permissions for the Microsoft Graph API. So here first I will click on add a permission. I will go to Microsoft Graph. I will go to delegated permissions. So very first permission that I'm going to use is for the chat. So here I will be using something like chat dot read write so that I can send messages whenever I want. Okay. So using this, I have added this one. The next permission that I'm going to add is basically a group permission that I'll be adding. So let me add a group permission. So two group permissions I will be adding. One will be a group dot read all. One will be a group dot read write all. I will be adding these two permissions as well. Once I've added these permissions, the next permission that I need to add is specifically for team. 
So here I need to add this permission so that I will be able to read the names and description of any team. So team dot read basic dot all. I'll be adding this permission. And at the very end, I will be adding few of the user permission. So on a user level, let me just type user. So I can here add a user dot read all and a user dot uh, read basic dot all. So I'll be adding these two permissions as well. So once I've added all of them, you can see for some of them, I am not getting a, uh, like it is saying that not granted for AWD technologies. So you need to grant the admin consent for these kind of uh, permissions. So I will be clicking on this button and I'll be clicking on yes. So once I do that, all of my permissions are in place. So now once this whole configuration is completed from my end, right? I can now go to my UiPath Studio. So already I have created one dummy package. So I have one dummy process. So here I have nothing uh, like no dependencies or packages installed as of now. So I will click on manage packages. I'll go to marketplace and I will just type teams. So once I type teams, you can see UiPath.Microsoft.Teams.Activities. I'll be using 0 0.5.1 version and I'll be clicking on install. And then I'll be clicking on save. So once I do this successfully, here now I should be able to see few of the activities. So let me type team. So once I type team, you can see there is a Microsoft team scope that I got. I will be using this scope first. Okay. In this scope, the authentication type, like I told you, there are three types. Interactive token is for attended kind of an automation. The latter two are for the unattended type. So I'm using username and password. So now here it will ask me to provide few of the details like application ID, tenant ID, password and username. So let's first start with the username and password. So I will be typing my username. So my username I am just typing. I will now also type my password. So again, as a best practice, you can use assets to store them and then you can fetch it in your UiPath Studio and you can just pass those values as the prop as a properties for this activity. So I have now set my username and password. Now to get the application ID and tenant, I will go back to my Azure portal. I will be going back to my overview. So once I click on overview, it will show me the application or the client ID. I will be clicking here. And once I click here within double quotes, I will be providing it as it accepts a string. Uh, similarly, I will go to the below part. There's a directory or a tenant ID. I will be copying this as well. And here I will be just providing it within again a double quote. So once everything is set up, so okay, all my keys, uh, passwords and username, everything is set up now. Now let's first do the very first activity. We'll use first get teams. So it will return me an array of all the teams that are available. So let me, I will choose the filter as all the teams. Okay. So you can also keep the filter as my joint team. So whatever uh, team that you are a part of, it will only show that. So I'm just using all teams for now. And here I will be just uh, doing, I will just pressing control K will be creating one array. So array of teams. So now if you see the data type as well, it is like of a, it is of an array type, but the type argument is of Microsoft.Graph.Team. So now here, what I will do, I will loop through this particular array. And here I can write for each team in ARR teams. Okay. And again, I have to set the type argument. I will be going here and I will just type team. Okay. So once I type team, whatever specific uh, team specific uh, classes or data types it has, it will return me those, right? So here I can, uh, here I just, yeah, just type P E A M. So here you can see I have one uh, called as under Microsoft.graph. I have a team class. So I'll be using this. So uh, here now the next thing I need to do is it will return me all the teams that I have, but I only need a specific team out of the three teams that I'm having right now. And if you see the name of my team, it is AWD technologies, right? So what I can do here is I can write team dot. So once I access this element, right, of for that array, it will give me some properties that I have. So I will use this display name. So it is, it will return me a string and it will return me the name of that particular team. So I will just equate it to maybe AWD technologies. Okay. So this is what I'm equating it against. So, so once I have equated it and once I have given this expression, right? So if it is AWD technologies, then only what I will do is I will try to get the 
channels so I, I can have multiple channels under one team like you know so here I will be giving this and here it will ask me to provide the team ID I can just write team dot ID so this property for that team class will return me the ID so once I have done this it will ask me to store the output somewhere so again it will return me an array of channels so I will just uh, store it in an array and once I have done that as well okay the very next thing that I am going to do is I am again now going to iterate through the channel the array channels okay so the chan the array of channels here I will write channel in ARR channels so now again here also I have to set my type argument so I will just type here channel so once I type channel you can see under microsoft.graph I am having this uh, specific channel variable okay so channel data type so that I will be using okay so I just click here on this part and I just click on ok So once I have said this, okay, the next thing that I need to do is again I need to check if it is the right channel or not. So I'll again use one if condition and here I can write channel dot display name. So display name is again a property which will return me the name of the channel and I will write equals and here I need to provide my channel name. So now to get the channel name, you can see this is the channel name that I have. I can simply copy this from here and I will just simply try to paste it here. Okay. So once I paste it here, the I, I'm, I am now sure that okay, I'm at the proper channel and at the proper team. Now I can use my send message. So send message you can see again under Microsoft Teams. So here I will be using the send messages. In this send message, I have to first provide the team ID. That is like team dot ID that we already have used. Again, I will be providing for my channel also. I have one property called as ID. So I'll be using channel dot ID. Chat ID is an optional parameter. I can leave it as such. Here I will be just typing something like, "Hi, uh, hi." This message is sent from MS Teams activity for UI part. Okay, so I can just type something like this. So here my entire workflow is ready as of now. You can see I don't have any of the messages as of now. The last message was only "Hello, people." Now let's try to execute it and see what happens, right? So I will click on run file. So now the bot is executing and uh, once it executes, let us check what is that we got. So here you can see I got a message like this message is sent from MS Teams activity for UI path. So this is uh, one of the way that you can use to integrate Microsoft Teams with UiPath without using any webhooks. So webhooks is also one of the way that you can do for. But in case, let's say you have uh, used, like you have a large number of channels, a large number of teams, right? You won't be able to create a webhooks for each one of them. So Microsoft Graph API can be one such way. So you can use this activity to send the messages uh, from uh, UiPath to Microsoft Teams. So in case you like this video, uh, please do like and subscribe to my channel. Do also post any comments that you want to give me, any feedback that you want or you want to even watch any of the videos in near future. Do let me know in the comment section. So keep automating till the next time we meet. Thank you.